Job costing. Topic three, job costing and cost flow. Job costing requires detailed record keeping to ensure that direct costs are traced accurately to jobs and that indirect costs are allocated accurately to jobs. Recall that in a job costing system, direct materials, direct labor, and an allocation of overhead are all inventoriable costs that are represented on the balance sheet, either as inventories of supplies, work in process inventory, or finished goods inventory. When inventory is finally sold, it is moved to expense on the income statement as cost of goods sold. Job costing records are typically held in subsidiary ledgers of the general ledger and costs flow through the accounting system to accumulate in job cost records. Records maintained in detailed form include the material records organized by the type of material, labor records organized by employee, manufacturing department overhead records organized by month, work and process inventory records organized by job, finished goods inventory records organized by job, and other records as required. Now, I don't need you to memorize this exact, you know, material records are organized by type of material, but intuitively, uh, see if this makes sense to you. You know, like how, um, how else would you want to organize labor records? If by employee is not the best way, um, how would, might you do this? So again, this is all about flow of information so that uh, data in can provide good analysis out. While using budgeted indirect uh, cost rates allows for jobs to be tracked throughout the year, the true amount of actual indirect costs spent is only known at the end of the year. So as a result, if you're using normal costing or budgeted costing, it's possible to have under allocated or over allocated indirect costs. Uh, under allocation of indirect costs refers to a scenario in which the amount allocated in the period is less than the actual amount spent. Uh, vice versa, the opposite. Over allocated indirect costs means that you allocated more during the period than the actual amounts spent. So we'll have to do a true up. We'll have to make this right. There are three ways in which we can allocate this under allocation or over allocation. So I just formulaically laid out what I talked about in the previous slide here, just for context purposes, where under allocation means that you allocated more costs or you were you allocated less cost than you incurred, uh, whereas over allocation means that you allocated more costs than were actually incurred. Okay, so what do you do when you get here? Uh, you have three choices. One is uh, to just reverse out all the allocations and redo it from scratch. So that's number one, the adjusted allocation rate approach. Um, hmm, a lot of a lot of details there going into every single job. I, again, mm, I don't know, why are you doing it? Is it important? Have these not been billed yet? I'm not quite sure, but this is uh, going to be the most timely. Um, and um, yeah, just, but also most accurate. The proration approach. Uh, so if you have um, the proration approach, we're gonna be basically looking at it and being like, hmm, all right. Uh, a little bit goes here, a little bit goes there, a little bit goes there. And number three, the right off to cost of goods approach. We're like, mm, we got close enough. Let's just write off all the rest, either a debit or a credit, uh, depending if it's over or under allocated to cost of goods sold. So I'm gonna talk about each one of these in more detail in the next one. I just wanted to demonstrate here that we're going from the most detailed um, to pretty good, uh, to the least detailed, just get it off of the balance sheet, go through, flow through the income statement. So for the first one, again, this approach restates all overhead entries across all ledgers using actual cost rates instead of the budgeted or normal cost rates. So effectively, what you're doing is recomputing the costs allocated to all jobs and restating all of those numbers. The proration approach, kind of like, I don't know, we call the Goldilocks. You know, the first one's so precise, the second one's not precise at all. This one, um, 
It's the, it's the one in, right in the middle. I'm not saying it's the best one. It's just the one right in the middle. So what this does is it spreads out any under or over allocated amount uh, to proportionally to ending work in process inventory, finished goods inventory, and cost of goods sold. So if I were to put it here, we would give the under or over allocation. It's fair to work in process finished goods inventory, and cost of goods sold. Well, so what we're saying here is that um, we have this amount. It would have flown through work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold, depending if it's still being worked on. Uh, there's some items that, some overhead that's sitting there on the shelf ready to be sold, and there's some overhead that's already been sold. And what we say is we take the ending balance and we just, um, we add up all the ending balances together, and then we see, okay, we'll give work in process its fair share, finished goods its fair share, cost of goods sold its fair share of the under or over allocated overhead costs. Whereas here, we're like, oh, we allocated too much um, manufacturing overhead. Let's take it back from cost of goods sold. Oh, we didn't allocate enough. Let's allocate it to cost of goods sold. So let's debit the cost of goods sold to increase the cost of goods sold for the amount that we under allocated before. Let's look at a question because what I'm most concerned with is understanding when this would be most applicable to your user given their specific needs. So your manager approaches you about the costing system in use at the company that you work for. They explain to you that management has been looking for ways to decrease the administrative costs the company spends on back office functions such as finance, IT and HR. Hmm. They noted that the system for adjusting for under or over allocated overhead is being targeted for simplification. With this specific goal in mind, which system is most suitable for the company to adopt? Would it be A, the adjusted allocation rate approach? B, the proration approach? C, the write-off to COGS approach? D, the process costing approach? The correct answer here is C. Both the adjusted allocation rate approach and proration appro approach require more steps of computation than simply writing off to cost of goods approach. The process costing approach is an attempt to distract as it's not related to under or over allocated uh, amounts. People, fantastic job. That's it for this chapter. Uh, please go on, uh, take a look at the tutorials. Um, maybe start synthesizing some of this material. Uh, let me know how this is going. Uh, thank you so much for your hard work and dedication. I know it's not always easy, um, but I promise you it will be worth it. Thank you.